you're watching the Christiana 321. I am the Christiana, and if you don't know who I am, how did you find this channel? Yes, darling. This is Fortran. Can you tell that this is cheese? All right, so if you don't know who I am, I am an engineer interested in professional development. I'm a student at Vanderbilt University, uh, pursuing my master's degree in engineering management. On this channel, we talk about books, we talk about professional development. I do whatever I want, kind of. I mean, so this week we're talking about the very well known Who Moved My Cheese. Uh, whenever people are talking about professional development books, this one comes up kind of a lot. Uh, and also, I'm moving to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, geez. It just seemed like it was time for me to read this. It's a really quick read if you're looking for something to put on a development plan or if you're facing some change in your life or the people in your life are about to face some change. This is a good book to start with, to think about how you handle change. I had a lot of thoughts about this book, so much so that I actually wrote them down by hand while I was reading, which is something I don't normally do. Sometimes I'll highlight important passages in the book but I, I just needed to try it again because I needed, I needed to make sure that I remembered. So basically in this book there are these four characters that are in a maze of types looking for their cheese. The thing that's going to bring them happiness. It's going to make them whole. And they find it. And it's great. But then after a little while the cheese is not in the same spot anymore. And so then they've got uh, a choice. They can adapt to the change and go look for new cheese or they can wait and see if someone brings new cheese back to the old spot. It's a little bit heavy-handed in places which kind of have to be because it is like I said a very short story um, but it has these different characters the ones that are constantly looking for change and like trying to uh, see the feature before it happens and make sure that they're ready in case something goes wrong or something happens that they need to adapt to. And then there's the ones that when something happens they react right away. They go out there and they um, start looking for their new cheese or whatever it is. So those are the two that are like the good ones I guess. And then there are two that take a little bit longer to uh, get on board to the change. And these are the two that I think most people who are going to be reading this kind of book on how to adapt to change, you're probably going to fall into one of these two categories. One, he takes a really long time to move on from his old cheese and decide to uh, pursue some the possibility of happiness in a different way or at least a different location. And then there's the one who never adapts, who kind of locks himself in because he thinks that he is entitled to the cheese that was there and it's not fair to him that it's gone. So why should he have to do anything? And I, I know a lot of people who fall into that category. I tend to think that I would be in I fall somewhere between the first category and the third category where I'm constantly trying to anticipate the changes that are going to happen. But also when changes happen, if they don't line up with what I was anticipating, it sometimes takes me a minute to come to terms with that and realize like, it's okay, it's not ideal, but we gotta move on. This book brought up a lot of questions for me, like, what is my cheese? What am I pursuing? Did my cheese move to Wisconsin or has it always been in Wisconsin? Um, what is going to make me happy? Uh, there is a quote, uh, I believe it was by Lewis Carroll, if it wasn't I'll put it somewhere. It says, if you don't know where you're going it doesn't really matter which path you take. And that's true. Like, if you don't know where you're going any path is going to get you there. And I've kind of lived my life, uh, a lot of my earlier life, 
in that way we're like I don't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up so I just need to pick a path and go down it and like it turned out okay I picked a path that I knew would like align with my interests and that I'd be somewhat good at and would let me you know afford the life that I wanted to afford is it perfect no is any career gonna be perfect I don't know but it really made me start thinking what is my cheese if I don't know what my cheese is I do know that I want to help develop people and that I want to help people be the best versions of themselves uh, whatever that looks like for them and so going towards management would give me one avenue towards that and this career change that I'm taking now I I'm pretty sure is a step in that direction but it also this book also brought up the question of how adaptable should you be I was at my previous company for close to six years and things were always changing there it was uh, kind of a joke amongst the team that the only constant at the site was change. There was a lot of change all the time. Schedule, budget, roles and responsibilities, always a moving target and that was just the nature of the job and some people could accept that and some people couldn't. Uh, but then I started noticing some changes, some other changes. If you look at the power to make that change, thought that they were necessary for uh, the the job, the position, the project to continue, and I wasn't super sure about that. Even though, like, I was very okay and very flexible and agile, if we're going to use project management terms, when it came to a lot of the changes on the site, it was one of the things that made my job kind of exciting. If I'm being just like honest, and the changes that were happening didn't really align with what I wanted for my future. My cheese had moved. I just wasn't gonna find any more good cheese there. Uh, what I thought was good cheese. There are plenty of people who would love that kind of cheese and I'm so glad that they exist and that they get to still be a part of that project. But it, I had a stash of cheese at work. The management moved that stash of cheese over here. I didn't wanna go over there for various reasons that I'm not going to get into on here. Um, so I needed to find new cheese somewhere else. And so that new cheese is over here in Wisconsin somewhere. Um, and that's, that's how it goes. When your cheese moves, you're not always going to be able to find the same old kind of cheese that you had before. Sometimes you need to find something new that you haven't experienced and that's what I'm hoping to find in Wisconsin. So another concept that this book talks about a lot, the first two who people who adapt to change really quickly because um, either they're anticipating it or as soon as it happens they're just like I'm gone we're gonna find this new cheese. Um, whether they were expecting the change or not they're I've got their running shoes ready to go. So those two people were labeled as like simple simple-minded and the other two characters were labeled as more complex. It kind of for a long time throughout the book until like the last little section basically they're saying just keep it simple. Keep it simple stupid. He was saying people who adapt to change easily are more simple-minded or people who are more adverse to change are the complex thinkers which kind of seems like a really negative way um, when your point is you should be more adaptable to change. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why he phrased it that way. But at the end of the day, um, one of the complex thinkers ended up uh, adapting to change really well. And it was his ability to think in a complex way and to envision himself finding the new cheese and to think through the different steps and the different issues and be able to be adaptable to change. It just took him a little longer to get there. And also, I don't think all simple-minded people are great at change, you know? I feel like some simple-minded people are a little bit stubborn. That's kind of the crux of the book. 
You want to be in the video? You can be in the video. So what finally made the complicated individual or the complex individual, whatever, more adaptable to change was his ability to laugh at himself and realize that what he was doing before was kind of silly. It wasn't working. And if you do the same thing over and over again, why would you expect different results? So on to the more critical thinking element of this book. All in all, like I said, for a short book, it had high concept explained at a very simple level. Uh, <laughs> talking about mice in a maze. But so as far as professional development books go, what I've been seeing more and more is there's really two kinds of professional development books. There's the research based and then there's the anecdote based. And this one's more of the anecdote based ones. And the thing with the anecdote, I'm just gonna say the word anecdote. The things with the anecdote based books are, they follow this really simple sales mechanism that gets explained in The Pursuit of Happiness by Will Smith's character when he's teaching other people how to be really good salesmen. And it's, tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. And this book really follows that. Uh, so it's also, <laughs> Uh, especially in anecdote books, it also follows the same pattern of a magician's assistant. Before a magician comes on stage, the assistant or the announcer or whoever comes out says, this is the most amazing magician. You will not believe your eyes. He's going to, uh, I don't know, amaze you. Confound the senses. And so, it gets you in this, gets most people in this place of being more willing to believe that, man, this guy's amazing. Now, if you have a hype up person and you get out there and you suck, it doesn't do very much for you. Um, in fact, a lot of times people will think that you suck even more than if you didn't have the hype up person come out there and tell everybody how amazing you're going to be. Um, so in this book, it starts off by telling, you know, I told this, told the story to so many people and all of them loved it. Everybody who I've told this to, magic. Their lives improved, they grew a full head of hair, became millionaires, uh, lost 50 pounds. Uh, I'm exaggerating here. But that's, that is what the first part of this book does and tell, sets you up to believe that this story is going to change your life. And then it tells you the story and then as a section at the end called the discussion where a bunch of friends are sitting around discussing the story and talking about how amazing it was and how it's going to change their lives. So it kind of sets you up to believe this is going to change my life. Which, it's a good story and it has a lot of important lessons and I think that um, it's definitely worth the read. But it is a really common uh, method for self-development and professional development books to follow this formula. And the problem with this formula is it's not any like facts or figures behind it. Sometimes they'll give you like true life anecdotes. You can go and look up and be like, oh, he talked to Jeff Bezos and then Jeff Bezos' life was changed because Jeff Bezos then gives an interview saying, my life was changed. But at the end of the day, it's still all anecdotal. I don't know if Jeff Bezos read this book. He was just the first like successful person that came into my head. Sorry. Oh, I've been talking for a long time. So, is it a good story? Yes. Do I think that there are a lot of lessons to be learned? Yes. There is one more thing that he says, or that they say in this book, that I think is really important. You have to stop being afraid to start feeling happy. And the thing that I really liked about that is he didn't say you have to stop feeling afraid in order to feel happy. 
everybody's gonna feel afraid sometimes. I believe it was Princess Diaries quoting Eleanor Roosevelt uh, when she said, uh, courage is not the absence of fear, but the decision that something else is more important. And that's what I think he was saying here when he was saying you have to stop being afraid. That has to stop being who you are if you want to feel happy, if you want to find that happiness, find that new cheese. And it's because if you let your fear be all consuming, you're never going to be able to step out of your, uh, your little corner where there used to be comfort and cheese in order to find that next thing. Um, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Feel the fear. Identify it. Say, oh, I'm afraid of that thing. Should I be? If you should be afraid of it, like bears, then be afraid of it. But if it's something silly, oh, I'm afraid of that thing. <laughs> That's silly of me. Why would I be afraid of that? And move on with your life. I'm kind of afraid of moving to Wisconsin. By the time you're seeing this video, I should already be in Wisconsin. Fingers crossed. You made it to the end of the video. Proud of you, kid. Good job. <laughs> like this video if you liked it. Comment down below. What's your cheese? Is it a successful job? Is it a high paying salary? A good relationship? A yard for your dogs? Learning how to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie recipe? Stay tuned. And whatever your cheese is, where is it? How are you getting there? But as someone who is trying to identify her cheese, it'd be really helpful to see uh, uh, what you guys' cheese is and either how you figured out what your cheese was and then how you are gonna uh, pursue it. And then of course, subscribe. I mean, really, I want to grow this channel. I want to start making content that um, more than just my mom sees. If you do these steps, it lets the algorithm know that I'm okay, I'm cool, I'm chill, and YouTube can spread my content. So for the next four weeks, starting with this week that you're watching this video, I'm gonna be making two videos a week for four weeks. Anyway, so Mondays and Thursdays for the next few weeks. Um, I'll be here, all right. Look out for that chocolate chip cookie recipe video coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. And if you want to see more professional development videos, I've got a whole bunch of professional development books that I've been reading. I talk about them in videos. Somewhere on this screen will be a playlist. I'll catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs> Good night. Sweet dreams.